Oh my god, I need to burp. Hi guys, welcome back to my channel. Today we're going to be talking about all of the books that I read in the month of May. I normally do a reading recap only on my podcast, but I've decided I'm going to do it both on my podcast and on my YouTube now because a lot of people like audio, a lot of people like visuals, so we're going to have the best of both worlds here. Last month, I think I read like 19 different books, and I remember saying that my goal for the month of May was to read less and socialize more. That did not happen. I don't think I socialized one bit. So if you see how many books I read and you're like, I want to do that. That's my reading goal. I want to read as much as Heather does. No, you don't. If you relate to me in any way, you need to seek help. Actually, sometimes it works for people. People, for me personally, I need to stop doing this because I need to socialize. <sighs> That's my own personal goal. You do you. I read 20 books, I think 20, 19 or 20 this month. I'm kind of in this phase of life where I'm trying to enjoy the peace that I have wanted all along and I have immense peace in my life and I'm very grateful for it. But it's borderline at the moment getting boring, like the peace is kind of turning into boring, which is why I'm reading a lot. All of the drama in my life is in my books. I talked about that on TikTok. At the moment, we're okay with that, but I feel like I need to do something eventually for the plot to thicken it a little bit because it's a little stagnant. Oh my god, these books are all <gasps> You're joking me. This is not what I needed today. I don't actually really like this book, but that that's really heartbreaking. At the beginning of this month, I made a video that was reading y'all's five-star reads y'all recommended to me on Instagram. I read The Silent Patient by Alex Mickle something. I can't, I don't know how to say that. Does It Hurt by H.D. Carlton. The Housemaid by Frida McFadden. Say You Swear by Megan Brandy. And then Love and Other Words by Christina Lauren. If you want to hear my in-depth or more in-depth thoughts that I had on all five of these books, definitely go watch that video because I've already put out most of my thoughts about these books. I'm just going to go ahead and give a rating for them. The Housemaid, I give it four and a half stars. This is a thriller and one of the first thrillers I've read. Actually, this is the first thriller I've read this year. I love thrillers. However, they make me really anxious. So I don't tend to like, that's not my book of choice to pick up, you know, but I did really enjoy this. And a lot of Freedom McFadden books are free on Kindle Unlimited. So I am wanting to read more of that author in the future. Does It Hurt by H.G. Carlton. I think I gave this book four stars, three and a half or four stars. I definitely like the cat and mouse duet better than I liked Does It Hurt. I liked that this, while it being a dark romance, also had a lot of thriller aspects to it. It made it a lot more intriguing with everything that was going on. The Silent Patient, I gave this book five stars. A lot of people, it's a hit or miss. It can be either a one star book or a five star book for a lot of people. I didn't see the plot twist coming. That might make me just stupid, maybe, because Apparently, when I mentioned that I didn't see the plot twist coming, everybody or a lot of people did see it coming. I never claimed to be smart, okay? I really liked that book. Say You Swear by Megan Brandy. I did not like this book. I thought it was outrageous. I did like Noah Riley, the MMC. He is the only reason I finished this book and gave it two stars, but I just, it did not work for me and I wanted it to work for me so bad, but it just didn't. Love in Other Words, I believe I gave this book four stars. Overall, it gave me an Emily Henry vibe, which I really enjoyed because Emily Henry is one of my favorite authors. The ending wasn't my favorite. Everything at the end knocked it down a star for me. I just wasn't, I wasn't vibing with it as much, but overall good and very adorable read. Those are all the books that I read in that video. The rest of these books. We're gonna start with Kat Singleton. I read two of her books this month. They are both free on Kindle Unlimited. First, let me say this author is so f kind. I read Black Ties, White Lies first. I gave both of these books three stars. Black Ties, White Lies and Rewhite, Re, Rewhite. Good God almighty, Rewhite. Oh my God. Re write our story. Okay, Black Ties, White Lies. This is kind of a workplace romance book. However, her ex-boyfriend's brother buys the company that she works for because she won't answer his calls because she assumes he's calling on behalf of her ex-boyfriend, but in reality, he has always liked her and he's calling. I mean, he wants to speak to her. So he buys the company she works for and becomes her boss. So he has five minutes to speak with her. <laughs> Listen. 
If a man wants me in his life and he wants to speak to me and he doesn't buy the company I work for to speak to me, I'm self-employed. <laughs> Then what are you doing? What are you doing? Anyways, ex-boyfriend's older brother. This is a very fun romance. It was very silly, very mindless read. I liked this one better than I liked Rewrite Our Story. This one just came out by Kat Singleton. I also gave this book three stars. I think it might have been Right Book, Wrong Time because I read it after I had just read so many small town romances and I feel like I was just kind of over it at that point. Skimmed a lot of this. I feel like overall the storyline in it is good. It's a second chance romance. I tend to not like second chance romance books. I've mentioned the only second chance that I like is like Happy Place and Final Offer by Lauren Asher. So because that's not something that I tend to enjoy reading. I kind of had a hard time with the book. But you know when you read a book and you're not enjoying it but you see the potential? Like you see how other people can like it? That's how it was with Rewrite Our Story. The next book that I read was The Curse of Ophelia. This is a fantasy book. I've talked about this multiple times because it's been on my TBR forever. I felt like it was missing something. It's about this 19 year old girl named Ophelia. Guess what? She gets a curse on her. Boom! Big shocker there. She's kind of has to save everybody. Which sometimes I have a hard time when it's like I'm reading a YA book and it's a teenager who has to like save everybody. With this being the first book in a fantasy series and there being more to come, sometimes the first books can come off very bland. This happened in Akatar. Like the first book I felt like it was just, eh, it was okay. Whereas A Court of Mist and Fury, I mean, it's right there. It was incredible. So I definitely want to read the second book in the series and give it a shot. I think I'm going to give it three stars though, because I can see how it can continue to build and how a lot of the writing that was within here can be important for fantasy books in this series in the future. Does that make sense? The last in-person book we have, I did it. Am I okay? No. I have been reading this book for two months. I rated this book five stars. Because it took me forever to read and I kept having to put it down, I was kind of questioning whether I should rate it five stars or not. But the thing is, is when I put this down every single time, and I talked about this on TikTok, every single time I put this book down, I couldn't get it out of my head. And still now I can't get it out of my head. I'm continually thinking about everything that the characters did had to do, went through, and I'm always processing what happened. I will never reread this book again. I think it was such a beautifully written story and while it was really slow, the depth of it, when you look at it after the fact of reading it, it's beautiful and I'm very grateful for it while sometimes occasionally in the moment I was like, good God, this is so many words. This is a lot. But after finishing it and processing it, I'm like, I'm grateful that it was wordy. Whereas in the moment I was like, Oh my god. And everybody said it would get worse and I don't know why I didn't trust you guys. I'm sorry. This is my formal apology. It was everybody on Instagram. They were like, it gets worse. Prepare yourself. And I was like, how much worse can it get? That's what you think. You get halfway and you're like, how much worse can this book get? Did I word that right? How much worse can the book get? That sounded better. Wasn't that the exact same thing I just said? I don't know. It gets worse. You think it can't? It can. It can. I reread Throne of Glass this month. I own it. It's right here. I didn't reread it. I listened to it on audiobook and I can fully say I enjoyed it way more the second time around. While I loved reading Throne of Glass the first time I read it, there's something about rereading a very long fantasy series that you love and having such an appreciation for it. So for me listening to it, I was just, I was so into the audiobook. The narrator was absolutely amazing and it was good. The first book that we have on Kindle Unlimited is Marriage for One. I normally love Marriage of Convenience. I wanted so badly to love this book, but I didn't absolutely love it. It started off really good and really strong and something was just missing throughout it. I don't know if it was lacking depth or if it was lacking a little bit of creativity, but I enjoyed it and I read it an entire day. I rated it three stars. It wasn't my favorite Marriage of Convenience, but it was an easy read. Next book that I read on the Kindle, Luna and the Lie. We know how I feel about Mariana Zapata. We know how I feel. This book was so similar to a lot of her other books. It's Grumpy Sunshine, it's Slow Burn, not Grumpy Sunshine. It's Grump and existing human being, normal human being. Something about this book didn't work for me. And I was so disappointed because I wasn't, I, I didn't like it. I rated it three stars. And this won't be a book for Mariana Zapata that I recommend. There were so many uncomfortable moments in this book. Whereas when you look at a lot of her other books, you could say the same thing about those, but apparently 
and for some reason the uncomfortable moments in this book just affected me a lot more and I was like what am I reading? I'm sad to say that because she is one of my favorite authors. Next we have The Adventures in Love series by Aurora Rose Reynolds. I'm gonna include all three books. You're wanting to have a Miley Stewart summer, these are the books for you. They're free on Kindle Unlimited but also the, the audiobook are also free on Kindle Unlimited. I listened to the audio versions. It has it has a male and a female narrator. I'm like, I'm giggling just thinking about it. The male narrator has a country twang. Deep breaths, everybody, deep breaths. Me being from the South and hearing when it switched to his POV in the first book, Adventures in Love, I think I rated all of these books three and a half stars maybe four stars. So they were all good reads and very fun, very easy, very short, less than 300 pages. Back to the narrator. In the first book, when it switched over to his POV, and he, I'm trying to compose myself so I can speak how he was speaking, and it goes, I'll be damned, I, I didn't know that she would ever come, like, that was the worst, like, sentence to say. What the f was that, Heather? He had a country twang, and I'm sounding like a broken record at the moment, but I don't even care. It was adorable. It was so adorable. And I forget that sometimes narrators in audiobooks have, like they pick them to have specific accents. I always listen to audiobooks where it's very neutral and this changed the game for me. This really did. Adventures in Love, you're thinking like, Heather, Adventures in Love, that's a really cringy name for all three, three of them, I know. Oh wait, I'm thinking, oh shit, guys. Okay, how do I deliver this to you all? Okay, everybody buckle in. It's called Adventures in Love. I forgot this key point. This is gonna turn so many people off from this book. <laughs> the three guys, the one from each book, them three together, they run a retreat in Montana that focuses in team bonding. First off, anything to do with team bonding makes me want to throw myself off a building. I'm not even kidding. I hate team bonding exercises. This is the kicker. All three of these guys are ex-Marines. <laughs> I'm sorry! They were all Marines together and they retired. I think it's important for me to mention that you should be scared. I'm scared of Marines. Any man, if he's like, I'm a Marine, I'm like, appreciate you. I do. You are appreciated. However, my trauma is starting to peek out. Okay, anywho, ha. These were all great books. Very fun, very easy reads. So let's move on. The next series that I read, I didn't read the entire series, I read the first three, was the Honey Mountain series by Laura Pavlov. These are also perfect for summer, especially if you're wanting, you know, a Miley Stewart summer, you're wanting small town vibes. If you have been looking for firefighter romance books, this kind of entire series, it follows, there's five sisters and each book focuses on each sister. Their dad is head of the firehouse. And so at least in the first book and the third book, both of those guys are firefighters. And in the second book, while the MMC is not a firefighter, you still get to see and read about hot firefighters because they're all connected. They're a very much firefighter community and firefighter family. This is very similar to the Avengers and Love series. They're very easy reads, and I would say they're like all three, three and a half stars. Maybe one of them in this entire series will be a four star read for me. But in the third book, I think I found myself skimming a lot, but the first two I definitely really enjoyed. If you're someone who likes repetitive books where it's very much small town, they fall in love, there's a third act breakup, then you'll like this book. The last two books that I read in the month of wit. The last two books that I read in the month of May were by Katarina Mora. Am I saying this right? I always recommended these books because I talk about the Twisted series a lot. We know how I feel about Twisted Love, but Twisted Games and Twisted Lies are like two of my favorite books. I love them so much. Someone recommended that I read these two books because they kind of give off the same vibes. The first book, The Wrong Bride, was the most infuriating book that I have ever read in my life. I still read it in an entire day, not even a day. I think I read it in like six hours, but it genuinely made me so 
angry, but I kind of recommend it. It's so silly and absolutely unhinged, and that's what made it fun at the same time. It's, an, it's a marriage of convenience, wrong bride kind of book. So the MMC, Eris, he was supposed to marry Raven. They're trying to merge the families together and they were the two that were supposed to get married in this arranged marriage. Hannah, Raven's sister, swooped in and tricked Eris into falling in love with her so that she could be the one to marry him. This is why the book made me so angry. Hannah is a narcissist. Like she is actually insane. And do you ever self-diagnose yourself when you have a bad day or you do something stupid or you think something stupid and you're like, oh my God, am I crazy? And some days I'll be like, am I a narcissist? I'm not, I am absolutely not. I am not. Sometimes my brain is like, does this thing where if I do certain things and make certain decisions that are for my benefit, sometimes my brain is like, you're a narcissist. No, you're not. Stop it. Reading this book made me realize that I need to stop self-diagnosing myself because I'm not. Hannah's a narcissist. She doesn't show up on their wedding day and they're like, Raven, you have to marry him. Like we have to merge the families. Like it has to be you. It was a show, a show but I ate it up. The second book in the series is called The Temporary Wife. I definitely liked this book more than I liked the first one simply because it didn't make my blood boil and it wasn't infuriating. It was just was. I rated this book three and a half stars whereas I think I rated the first one Maybe I rated the first one three and a half. I rated the first one three and a half stars too, but I still liked the second one more. The Windsors is the name of this series. And I think it follows each sibling in the Windsor family. And they're just a very wealthy family. So if you don't like billionaire romances, you're not gonna like this series. All of them have to get an arranged marriage. And in the second book, Luca, he kind of has a thing with his secretary, but not really. They've never done anything. They've worked together for eight years. If anything, they hate each other, but the veil between love and hate, it's thin. It's thin, okay? He finally finds out who his arranged marriage is gonna be with and he it's like an airhead girl. And he's like, fuck no, absolutely not. So then he just gets married to a secretary. <laughs> without paying any heed. Is that a word? <laughs> without paying any heed, without paying any mind, we're gonna say that, to like the family rules and they just get married. That one was very enjoyable and it was very fun. Both of these books are very repetitive, so just know they're not literary masterpieces. They're just kind of addicting. And those are all the books that I read in the month of May. I wasn't planning on sharing my June TBR, but I do have some of these books right here that I already set aside for the month of June, so I might as well go ahead and share them. Or I think two of these, I mentioned that I wanted to read this month, but I didn't get around to them. Again, mood reader. So I'm gonna mention them again, and if I don't get to them in the month of June, then I will probably never bring them up on my channel again, because that's just embarrassing. Binding 13. I think I'm just scared of this book. I'm gonna force myself to read it. I have to, or else I'm serious. You'll never hear me speak of this again. I also just signed up for book of the month. This is the first book box that I've ever been a part of. I feel like a lot of book boxes are a scam, but they said if you sign up for the first time, you get a book for $5. This book is only out in hardcover at the moment and you have to pay $30 for it. So I was like, F it, I'll just sign up for book of the month and pay $5 for it. This is about a girl who leaves a one star review on a author's book. This is now, this book has become my biggest fear. I don't leave one star reviews though. I just won't review it if I don't like it. So technically I'm in the clear. She leaves a one star review on this author's book and it's like a nasty review maybe, or maybe it's very casual and she's just explaining how she doesn't like his book and he starts stalking her and comes after her. Emma Carpenter is living in isolation with her golden retriever, house sitting in old beachfront home on the rainy Washington coast. One day she reads a poorly written but gruesome horror novel by the author A.G. Kane and posts a one star review that drags her into an online argument with none other than the author himself. I feel like something like this has, has to have happened. 
in the real world. Soon after, disturbing incidents start to occur at night. To Emma, this can't just be a coincidence. It was strange enough for this author to bicker with her online about the lousy review. Could he be stalking her too? I am so excited to read this. Next we have Priest. We're reading this in my book club this month. Please, for the love of God, go join if you want to read this. My religious trauma is like tweaking out at the fact that I'm about to read this book. Fourth Wing, I've been putting it off. This is like the hit fantasy book at the moment. And the reason why I'm putting it off is because I have a feeling that I'm gonna love it and I don't want it to be over. I don't believe this is YA. I believe this is more new adult because I definitely have heard that it has more smut or some smut in it. I don't know. Love a fantasy book with like a subplot of romance. And then the last book, I wasn't planning on reading this, but I just got sent this book by the author, Claire Contreras, I believe I'm saying that correctly. On the front, it says three years ago, she ruined my life. Now I'm going to ruin hers. I'm just gonna read the back to you because it sounds, it sounds so fun, but also like kind of dark at the same time. My reputation at Fairview University preceded me. I was the projected, I was the projected number one pick in the NHL draft. Hockey? The, you know, sh hockey heather you literally got sent a puck i got sent a puck in the package how did i not recognize this hockey i was like "Ooh, this is a fun i was the number one projected pick in the nhl draft and the fan favorite at the rink people wanted to be me or be with me except for lila james miracle she didn't look at me like i was her next meal she eyed me with disdain have you seen those tiktok videos and youtube videos where they speak like she didn't look at me like I was her next meal. She eyed me with disdain. Have you heard? I was about to start reading like that. F and giggles, but I didn't think everybody would understand it. I'm gonna speak normally, okay? Instead of vying for my attention, she ignored me and pushed me away. She was completely unattainable and I became obsessed with her. When I finally got her, it felt like I was on top of the world. I was going to help the team win another championship going into the draft and had Lila by my side. And then without a warning, she left me vanished it took me three bitter angry long years three f years i should have known that i read it on the front it took me three bitter angry long years to find her but i did and now she owes me a lot more than just an explanation three years ago she ruined my life now i was going to become her worst nightmare <laughs> i'm like kicking my feet right now stop giggling and kicking your feet God, he's gonna ruin her life and so what? <laughs> oh, my eyes are watering. That's all for today's video. Thank you guys for watching me recap all of the books that I read in the month of May and listening to the books that I want to read in the month of June. I really do hope that I can get around to a lot of these books. Add these books to your TBR if you haven't read them and give me your thoughts if you do read them. I will see you guys next week. Bye! I just whacked myself in the face with that book. I love you all. I wish I could say all night long. Let's get out of here. Hey, uh, darling.